Hello, thanks for joining this session of the Embellance Conference 2031. So today I'm going to talk about how to develop Linux device drivers, um, more focused on the architecture of a Linux uh, device driver. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Um, before I talk about the agenda, uh, a little bit about myself. So I've been working with embedded development for 25 plus years. I'm located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, I have here a company called Embed Labworks, um, where I provide consulting and training services worldwide, actually. Um, I'm an open source contributor, so I contribute to several open source projects, including Beautiful, Yocto, and the, the Linux kernel. I have also a blog um, where I write in English, embeddedbits.org. Um, okay, so a little bit about the talk. Uh, so the main objective of, of this talk is to try to cover uh, the architecture of a Linux device driver. This is a kind of uh, entry-level talk for kernel developers, most for those that um, are starting uh, to understand how a Linux kernel device driver works. And um, the, one of the objectives here is try to connect the dots, try to understand all of the concepts behind uh, a driver in the Linux kernel. Uh, unfortunately, we will not have uh, too much time to discuss um, uh, deeper concepts like uh, the structures of the kernel driver model or even the kernel APIs in detail. Um, but the main objective here is try to uh, make it possible for you to open uh, the source code of a Linux kernel driver and you're going to be able to understand the structure of the driver, right? And uh, you can start from that and then learn in details all of the APIs. Here is the agenda for this talk. I'm going to quickly introduce device drivers and uh, shared drivers. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about how hardware access works. Um, focused on memory mapped IO devices. Um, after that, we're gonna talk about the driver model, and then we're gonna discuss uh, what are frameworks and what are buses and uh, device descriptions and device trees. So all of the main concepts that we see today in a modern Linux device driver. I usually, on my talks, I try to do a lot of hands-on, so this talk will not be different. We're going we're gonna to have um, five hands-on. So here we're going to try to develop a LED driver, a very simple device driver, because the objective here is not to understand the hardware, but to try to understand the, the kernel uh, infrastructure for driver development and the kernel API a little bit. So instead of doing a uh, development of a USB driver or I2C driver that could bring some of the complexity of the hardware, um, we're going to focus on a very simple LED uh, device connected on a GPIO and try to write a driver for it. OK, uh, let's start with a very simple question. Uh, what are device drivers? And, I usually say that uh, drivers are abstractions, right? Drivers will uh, convert something uh, more complicated to something more simple to use, right? And um, so in our example, we have a LED. We want to convert something more complicated, like we have to, um, to uh, write to, to register from a GPIO controller to something more simple, just toggle an LED. So we want to create this abstraction. And all of the drivers are this kind of abstraction of converting something more complicated to something more simple. Of course, you can have this concept of drivers implemented in user space. Uh, the kernel is able to provide you some APIs. So you can uh, talk to the hardware from the user space level. So for example, we have uh, SPI dev or I2C dev where you can talk directly to the buses if you want, and then to the devices connected to the buses. We have also the user space IO uh, framework in the Linux kernel where we could use to, to directly 
uh, talk to uh, memory mapped IO devices, for example. But that's not the focus here. Focus here is uh, writing drivers at the kernel space, because this is one of the main responsibilities of a kernel, right? Provide you the infrastructure to write um, device drivers. And when we talk about abstraction on Linux, the main abstraction for almost everything um, is files, right? Our files. So um, here we're gonna, of course, uh, work with files. So files from the user space perspective are our main abstraction to talk to the hardware. So that's the main uh, original and simple idea. So our address driver, we will run in kernel space because it needs privileges to talk to, to the hardware and it will provide some kind of file so user space applications can talk to the hardware. There are several APIs in the Linux kernel to do this. Um, we have APIs to export files to slash dev, we have APIs, APIs to export files to slash sys, and um, of course we don't have time to study all of these APIs and that's really not the objective here, the objective here is to understand the concepts, so we're going to have some contact with an API to export files to slash dev. Uh, they are uh, special files that we usually call device nodes or device files. Those files are special because they have three uh, attributes that other files doesn't have, like the type. So a device file or a device node can be of type block or char. And uh, the idea here is that a char device is a device where you uh, exchange bytes or you talk in terms of string of bytes so you read and write bytes and block devices are devices where you communicate with blocks right you have a um, um, specific amount of um, space dedicated for these devices like for example a disk a disk is exported by uh, disk controllers as block devices so you can um, you can go from start to the end, you can you talk to this device uh, using blocks of data. And shared devices like serial ports, audio devices, they are shared devices because you exchange bytes with those devices, you exchange the stream of bytes. Um, again, this is just abstractions uh, available in the Linux kernel. So you can export an interface to a specific harder. Those device files have also two other attributes that uh, we usually call device number. Uh, these are the major number and the minor number. And the idea here is that the major number is a number that identifies the category of the device, like uh, serial ports have one dedicated major number, audio devices have one dedicated, or sometimes uh, we could have a block of major numbers dedicated to a category of device. And the minor number is the identifier of that device um, in, the, in the category. So let's say you have four set of parts, all of them will have the same major number, but each one of them will have a minor number. And if you list the devices at slash dev, you're gonna see these properties um, in, in those files there. Um, so that's the main idea, right? This abstraction of a char uh, driver that will uh, export to the user a char device. So you write a char driver that will export this char device so the user can talk to you. And the idea is very simple. The abstraction is a file. So every file operation uh, will get to your driver uh, and so when the user open the file, the kernel will call the open function from your driver. When the user write the file, the kernel will call the write callback from your driver. So from the driver's perspective, you just write callback functions, you register the, in, the, in the kernel and then the application will be able to talk to you. And of course, in the driver, you can talk to the hardware because you are running um, in kernel space. Those are 
basically the three steps to write a shard driver again we will not go much deeper on this but the idea is to basically understand how that works uh, we need to allocate the device number the major and minor number that's the first thing that you would do in a shard driver and then you implement the callbacks uh, you don't have to implement all of the file operations uh, callbacks you just have to implement those that make sense for a driver and then you initialize this in the linux kernel so there are a few functions that you can use to do that and again there are variations of these like you can have a misc driver that is more simple to do it but um, we're not go not go deeper to this uh, just to have an idea of how that would work it seems complicated, but it basically we are kind of uh, creating a link from the driver to the device node that the, the user can see. So uh, on the left, we have uh, everything happening in kind of space, on the right in user space. So in the driver, we define a, a variable of type dev t, that's, that's a variable that we will identify our device, uh, our shared device, and then, um, we um, allocated, um, sorry, the dev t is the variable that stores the major and minor number. So we uh, create this variable in the driver and we allocate in the kernel that could be dynamically allocated by the kernel or you can statically allocate in the driver, but you need a unique pair of uh, major and minor number for your driver. And then you implement the file operations that your driver will handle. And then you declare the CDEV uh, variable. That's the variable that will store information about your SHAR device. Um, and then you have to call this, this a function that will initialize this structure, basically linking with the file operations. And then you register this in the kernel with another function, CDEV add. And after that, you kind of have a, a shared device register in the kernel. So if you create a file in, you, in, in slash dev with those attributes, this is a, a, a shared device with this major and this minor, every call to this file will get to your driver. So if you call write to this file, the write will get to the kernel and there is a thin layer in the kernel called the virtual file system that will uh, help on this. You will check that this is a char, um, char device. Um, this is a file that points into a char device and then it will check for the major and minor and then it will link to your driver and your driver, uh, the callbacks from your driver will be called. So, so the driver is basically registering the kernel a shared device with some callbacks that will be called when uh, an file, a device, file in user space uh, is accessed by uh, an application. That's basically the idea. So let's do uh, our first hands-on here. Uh, so what I have here is a terminal, as you hopefully you can see, and also uh, the, a camera pointing to um, a small board that I have here. And uh, I'm running here a, a very simple um, Linux system that I created with Buildhood. I'm doing a completely uh, network boot here. So I'm booting the kernel and device tree from the network using TFTP and also uh, the file system uh, using NFS. So it should take a few seconds to boot. Then we can log in. And here we go. We have our small Linux box so we can play around driver's development. In this window, I have uh, the first. So of course, we don't have time to start writing code here. So I'm going to quickly show the code and run it and show how it's working. This is the first version of the driver. And here, again, we are trying to write a, a LED driver for the Linux kernel. We are start, starting with the, the user space part, or we are starting with the uh, the interface that we want to create to the user, right? Using this concept of uh, uh, 
char device. So we have here a structure with information that our driver needs to run. Um, again, we don't have time to go deeper into the the um, the types and the functions and the the API, uh, but I'm gonna quickly give an overview of the of the driver. So this this is the variable that stores the device number, major and minor, and this is the variable that stores the structure that stores a device a, a shared device, right? That will be registered in the kernel. Um, it is a kind of module, so in the end we can see we have the in each and exit functions. This is the in each function, and here we are basically calling those three functions that I mentioned: allocating the major and minor number, uh, initializing the shared device structure, and registering in the kernel. I have two callbacks. We can see here is the in this fops uh, structure. I have a callback for write and a callback for read. So every time I call read and write to a device file that is mapped to this driver, uh, these callbacks will be called. And again, I'm not writing to the uh, GPIO registers right now because that's not the focus. I'm just providing an interface to the user. So those read and write functions are just echoing a message in the Linux kernel, right? Using PR info. Uh, called so uh, nothing fancy here. Just uh, we're just implementing an abstraction. Let's let's compile it. Uh, so here I compile this uh, kernel module and install it in my root file system, and then I'm go to the terminal. Uh, it should be there, so I can uh, right now just just load this driver. Okay, we can see that it was initialized. Um, to access this driver, we need the, the major number, right, to talk to this driver. And one way to get this major number is to just listing the proc devices file. And, and here we can see 243 is the major number for this driver that was automatically uh, and dynamically allocated by, by the Linux kernel. Then now we can uh, create uh, we can create a device node for this uh, file. Then we can talk to the hardware. So I'm going to use the MK node, node um, utility to create a slash dev slash LED, a char driver, uh, a char device that that's what our driver is, right? The major number that was allocated and the minor number is zero because we just registered one uh, device in the driver. Uh, we can list this file and we can see this is a shared device, right? Uh, that is pointing to our driver that is registered with, with this major and minor number. Now, every time we write or read to this file, um, the callbacks from the driver will be called, as you can see here, this let on message is, co is coming from, from the driver. Uh, I can also uh, write zero. I can uh, cat and, and see the content, the, the, the value, right? So let's turn on our LED and, and see that it is on. Again, we are not uh, really turning on a model of the LED yet because we didn't write this code, but we're just providing an interface to the user. That's the first part of this, um, this driver. Now let's go to the second part of this uh, driver. What we have right now is this, right? Uh, so our driver is exporting an interface to the user and that's it. So second part, let's talk to the hardware. Um, again, we don't have time to go deeper into this talk, right? Don't talk into the hardware, but some, some um, couple of slides to understand some concepts here. Um, there are a few ways that we can talk to the hardware, depending on the CPU architecture, right? Uh, two common ways, port IO, uh, in this mechanism that usually, for example, x86 provides kind of uh, mechanism, you have a bus dedicated to I.O. So you have CPU instructions that you can use to talk to I.O. devices on this special bus. Um, nowadays, the most common way to uh, talk to the hardware is uh, via memory mapped I.O. or MMIO. Here, 
we have uh, IO devices mapped to our address space. So in the address space, you have the registers there uh, where you can talk to the hardware. So uh, if you have a pointer to a, an address in memory and if you write to, to this address, you're really actually writing to a, a, a register, for example. Uh, that's how it works, for example, on ARM and on other popular architectures. Um, of course, um, usually, right, on those modern um, SOCs, we have uh, MMU in the middle of the communication. So, like, you go to the da data sheet, you have there the addresses of the devices. You cannot just take those addresses and, and uh, set a pointer and just reference this pointer and you are talking to the hardware. Right? It's not that simple. So we have uh, in the middle MMU, memory uh, management unit. That's a kind of special hardware that will do the mapping from virtual to physical addresses for you. And you have to work with MMU when you're talking to the hardware. So that means you, you will gonna need to uh, map the virtual addresses to a physical address when working with uh, memory mapped IO devices. Those are, again, three uh, main steps to talk to a memory mapped IO device. You need to request um, a, a region of memory where you have the registers. This is not mandatory, but it, it is recommended because with this, the kernel knows which drivers are, are using which part of the registers available um, in memory. Uh, step two, mapping from virtual to physical addresses. We can use IORI map for that. And the third step is really uh, writing to those registers. Although you could try to use the, 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 the pointer that IORI map would return for you to access those drivers, it is recommended to use some wrapper functions from the kernel, because those wrapper functions uh, will take care of things like agencies and uh, um, we'll use uh, um, some internal kernel APIs to make sure that you're really um, able to access um, uh, the, the devices um, in memory. Let's do our second hands-on. Again, and now we will be able to see the LED uh, turning on and off. So uh, let's quickly take a look at the, the source code of the. So here are here is the source code of the second version of the driver. It's the first version plus access to the to the hardware. So. Uh, here we can see a few additional functions being called in the initialization function. We have the request in a region, requesting some um, part of the memory to be used as uh, memory mapped I.O. Um, we can see here, and I didn't explain that, but uh, basically uh, to access, so we have, uh, I have here an LAD connected to a GPIO and uh, to access this uh, GPIO uh, controller, we need at least to talk to two registers, the data registry to toggle the I.O. and the direction register to change the direction to output. So that's what I'm doing here. And you can see everything is hard coded here. And we know that like for those that work with kind of drivers, we know that this is wrong, but don't care about this now. We're gonna improve this driver um, until the end of the presentation. So we can see here, um, this is the base address of the, the GPIO controller, GPIO controller one, that's where I connected the, the LED. And uh, I need to register as I mentioned, right? And those are uh, the index of those two register, the data and the direction. So let's get back to the initialization function. So this request in the region, we request the kernel the usage of this region of IO, memory map IO um, for the driver. And then after that, I map to a virtual address, this, this uh, physical address. So this is the physical address and I'm mapping to a virtual address and storing this variable where I can use um, in the driver. Now we have the calls to, the, to register a shared device. 
And in the end, I call this set direction function where we can see we are using readL and writeL to uh, read and write uh, to the register, right? Um, so I, I'm reading the data register, the direction register here, chain toggling the bit to set the direction as output and writing back um, to the to the register. So, and I'm doing the same thing in the set led function. That's the function that will be called in the write callback to change the status of the, the LED. Let's see if it's working right now. So I'm gonna compile it. Um, I'm going to the terminal where I'm going to unload the previous driver and load the new one. Um, now, one thing that we can check is this procioman file where we can see that we allocated those two registers for this driver. We can see here eight bytes. The, necessary to, to talk to the two registers from GPO controller one. And then uh, now we can really uh, turn on and off the LED. We can see here in my board that the LED was turned on and off, right? And we can blink the LED, LED now if we want. Very nice, we have the first version of the driver working. Uh, let's get back to our uh, presentation. That's what we have now. Um, so we have an LED driver that's, that is able to export an interface to the user and also uh, it's able to uh, talk to the hardware. We are finished the work, right? So let's move to the next project. Actually, our driver is far, far away from being um, uh, good or from being um, in a standard way or to follow the rules to write a good kernel driver, uh, a, a, kernel, a kernel driver that is, um, that, that uses the modern architecture of the Linux kernel and it, it is uh, implemented in a way that um, you can maintain it. So, Let's talk about the issues that we have in this uh, driver. Problem one, we created an interface to the user. Uh, that's not good, right? Because if we say to three developers, please write a LED driver, and we don't say anything about the interface that they need to export to the user, they will probably create three, three different interfaces, right? Uh, so the way you write and read from, from the, the the driver will be uh, different. So we need a way to standardize this interface. Second problem, we are allocating two registers from our control, GPIO controller, and that means that no one else will be able to use those registers. So, and in our driver, we are just using one GPIO from a GPIO controller that, that has 32 GPIOs. So that means no one will be able to use the other 31 GPIOs. That's really wrong. The third thing is, our driver has information about the hardware, and that's also wrong. Uh, we should remove information because that means that if we change the hardware, we need to change the driver, and that's not good. So to make it easy to maintain this uh, driver, and um, we need to make it, make it possible uh, to, uh, we, we need to remove the information from the hardware uh, from the driver, right? And that, that those are the issues that we need to solve in this driver, and it will change a lot. And that's where we have, and that's where uh, the driver model comes. So the driver model provides several abstractions to drivers uh, to make it more modular, uh, reusable, and, and very easy to maintain. Uh, among those uh, abstractions, we have the concept of frameworks. That's basically a standard interface where every type of driver can uh, benefit from. Right for so LED uh, drivers, we can we have the LED framework uh, for uh, audio uh, codecs. We have the also framework and and so on. So uh, those frameworks, the idea is to make it possible to uh, standardize the interface with the user. And the buses, the buses has a, a few objects, but uh, one of the main objects is to decouple the driver from the device. So the device. Uh, carries information about the hardware and the driver implements the logic to talk to the device. So we decouple this. We're gonna see how it works. Uh, 
So in the end, that's what we want. Um, and uh, those three points that I mentioned, right? The, the frameworks, the, the standardized way to provide interface to the user. Um, we're gonna solve the, the second problem using GPIO lib. Uh, and we're gonna solve the third problem, use the buzz infrastructure from the kernel. So we're gonna discuss these in details in the last three parts of this talk. Let's start with frameworks. Uh, so the idea of the framework is to provide a standard interface uh, and abstraction to users. That means device drivers, developers don't need to, to uh, think about this interface and uh, uh, users doesn't need to uh, learn new interfaces depending on the driver. So uh, for, uh, for example, a camera, you always, uh, you always know what to expect, right? As a developer, you know that you have to use the Video for Linux framework. As a user, you, 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 you already know how that will work. And also all of the applications that knows how to talk to camera will work with our driver. So everything will work because you are providing interface in a standard way. And there are frameworks for almost every kind of hardware that we have, of course, not for everything, but um, from now and then uh, it's common that, that people create uh, new frameworks as, as the kernel community sees uh, a need for it, right? So. Uh, input framework for uh, input devices, keyboard, mouse, joystick, uh, also framework for audio devices, video for Linux for uh, multimedia devices, uh, industrial I.O. framework for, for sensors and, and the list go on and on. And of course, you have a framework for LEDs. And usually to, to work with a framework is very simple. You create and define an instruction, initialize this structure. That's the structure from the framework. And then you provide one or more callbacks, it depends on the framework, and then you register this in the framework. That's basically it. Let's, let's do now our study demo. I'm gonna, again, quickly show uh, the code here. Three, uh, this is the code. What has changed here? We are moving away from a shard driver to use the framework. So we are not inventing the interface here, right? We are uh, leveraging uh, kernel API, the LED framework, to create that interface for us. So we can see here in the initialization function of the module, we can see here that uh, all of those functions related to shard drivers, CDEV meets, CDEV add, everything is gone. We are here basically uh, initializing the framework structure this is the name of the LED, and this is the callback, and that's it. And then we register this in the Linux kernel. After that, the framework will create all of the needed interfaces for the user to talk to our driver, right? And, and that's basically it. And if we look at our, uh, at our callback, it is calling our satellite function. Right, so we remove it, they open the, the read function, the write function, we just have one callback, that's the callback that will change the state of the LED. It will receive a brightness variable, and with this variable, we can see that what, what's the level of the brightness that the user wants for that LED, and then we can manipulate the hardware from there. Let's compile this uh, kernel module, install, and see how it works. Uh, I'm gonna unload the previous driver and load the new one. Nice. Now I'm gonna show you this directory. So here is the, the directory where interfaces for LED are exported by the LED framework, uh, sys class LED. So if I uh, remove my driver, we can see that we don't have, uh, we just have two. MMC uh, LEDs there, but if I uh, load my driver, we can see that we have another one. That's our driver that exported this new LED. And if we go to that uh, directory, we can manipulate this LED. So this is the new interface that we have for the little LEDs and it is standardized. So every new LED driver will export the same interface. That's very good. And from the user's perspective, I always know that too. Uh, toggle an LED, I can just 
uh, right to this brightness file from the LED. And we can see here. And with the framework, we can leverage common code from the loose kernel. So that is this concept of trigger in the uh, LED framework. So you can enable a trigger that will automatically uh, um, turn on or off your LED depending on some kind of event. So for example, we have a trigger for write to the SD card. So if you want to provide this feature to your user, you can just enable this trigger. You don't have to uh, implement this code in your driver because this is part of the framework. And that's very, very nice. For example, I will enable here the heartbeat trigger. That's the trigger uh, that uh, blinks the LED according to the CPU load. Uh, you can see there a uh, heartbeat uh, frequency in the LED, LED. Very nice. So I guess now we solve the first problem of our driver, right? uh let's now solve the second problem the remembering what's the second problem here we are using two registers from a gpio controller and uh, we are locating those two registers and we are using just to toggle one gpio and that's not good because the other 31 uh, gpios um uh, are useless in our system right now so we need someone in the middle to manage gpios that's the fact, and for that, the kernel has this API called GPIO lib. So the kernel implements a kind of uh, producer consumer model for GPIOs. We have G, uh, uh, GPIO producers, uh, for example, uh, GPIO controller drivers that will produce GPIO. Uh, and we have consumers, that's the, the drivers that will use GPIOs. Could also be a user application that using GPIO at the user space level. And GPIO lib is, GPIO lib is the, the API in the middle that will manage that. Those are a few of the functions from the GPIO lib. And I'm not going over the details here because we don't have much time, right? Uh, so I'm gonna quickly show you the fourth version of, your, of our driver with uh, the GPIO lib. And, and see how that... Um, So what has changed here? We remove all of that code to write directly to memory mapped IO devices, write to registers, and now we are just talking to the GPIO lib, right? So it's much more simpler. As as we can see here, um, this is the initialization function. So the only thing that we do is requesting a GPIO. So we request the GPIO, we convert it to a descriptor, and then we use it. For example, in this uh, uh, GPIO D direction output to set the direction of the ping to output. And uh, in the satellite function, we use the GPIO D set value to change the, the, to toggle the LED. So very, very simple. And of course, this will call, this will get to the GPIO lib API that will call a function from the GPIO controller. So that means we need, in this case, the GPIO controller working. So we can talk to the GPIO controller that will talk to the LED. Um, and that means uh, to make that works, we need to change uh, the, the device tree to uh, enable the GPIO controller because I basically disable it to uh, write a driver that can write directly to the registers. So I'm gonna now enable it again. I'm gonna build. Um, while this is building, I just wanna quickly show you uh, one thing. Oops. Let me increase here. size of my terminal we can we're going to see that uh, the although we are kind of making the the code more modular more reusable using standard kernel apis we are adding more features to the driver like that that trigger feature that i i showed the code 
is becoming smaller, right? So we are we are adding more features, and the code is becoming smaller. Uh, we can see here like the 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 first functional version. Uh, sorry about that. Let me get back here to the directory, like four. So the code, the first workable code was uh, uh, 164 lines. When we move it to the frameworks, we reduce it 40 lines. And now using GPL lib, we reduce it um, 30 plus lines. So we reduce it almost in a half the number of lines, just moving to frameworks and GPL lib. And, and using standard kernel APIs and providing the user more features with a standard interface, we reduce the number of lines. That's uh, that's very nice. Let's uh, okay. It seems we compile it. Our device tree. Now we're gonna uh, reboot to be able to. I don't remember if I compiled this driver, but I'm gonna compile again. Nice. So let's wait for the boot. Um, let me quickly check here uh, the GPIO detect tool. We can see here that now we have a controller for GPU zero with that uh, um, address that we were using in the kernel. So that means that our change in the device tree worked. Um, let's load our driver and see if it's still working, right? So we loaded our driver. Uh, I will gonna run the GPIO if tool just to check if the we can confirm here that the gpio line 9 for this controller is allocated for our grv led driver that's nice and now we can just see if it is still working right let me get the camera here and one zero we can see that the led is still working very nice um the last step it, and it is one of the most important ones. It is the bus infrastructure. So what is missing right now is working with the bus infrastructure to decouple the driver from the device, right? And uh, this is also part of the driver model. And uh, we have basically for the, this bus infrastructure, we have four main components, the car, and that's the kind of common code for every kind of bus in the kernel. We have a core like I square C, USB, etc. We have bus adapters that's for the bus controller. The, those are drivers. We have the bus drivers that's the drivers for devices that will access the bus. And we have bus devices. Those are the devices connected to the bus. So each of those components they have a structure that they use to represent them in the kernel, right? The, the bus type for the bus core, the device driver for bus adapters and drivers, and the structured device for the, the bus devices. So that's the main idea here. Um, uh, this is very generic, so a bus driver is the driver for a device that's using a bus. The core is a generic kernel, generic code for a specific bus. We have the adapter that's driver for controllers and the devices that are registered in buses. And there are a lot of advantages if we think about this architecture of buses, right? We have more control over buses in the system. We can really separate the driver from the device. That's the idea. The idea here is that the driver is kind of a class that will be instantiated uh, when you register a device in the bus. That's very nice. Uh, it is easy since everything is connected via buses and devices we can easily see what's connected to what. And that's very nice because also improve, improves uh, power management in the system. Um, so when you think about power management, we can see that uh, uh, every device is really connected to a bus in the system. This is an example for I2C device. So 
an accelerometer driver uh, connected to I2C. So uh, it will register uh, the, the driver in the bus, in this case, the I2C bus. And then uh, you're going to register a device in the bus. And then when that happens, it will, it will, we will have a match that will call a function, a callback from the driver that's called probe. Right. So when you register a driver that know how to talk to a device and you register a device in the bus, then a match will happen and then uh, the driver will be instantiated via a function called probe. That's the same thing. And really the question here is how this device is registered in the bus. We're going to talk about this. About our driver, uh, it's a little bit simpler because there is no buzz, right? We're talking about memory map IO devices. In, this, in that specific case, there is a kind of virtual bus called platform bus. So our driver register in the platform bus. And then when devices are registered in this bus, uh, if the name of the device matches the name of the driver, a probe function from the driver is called. As we're going to see uh, when we talk about device tree, when the compatible string, the device tree matches with the compatible register in the driver, uh, the kernel will call the probe function. So how are those devices registered? There are a few ways to register a device, some kind of deprecated mechanisms to do this using some buses APIs. Uh, we don't do this anymore in the Linux kernel. Uh, there are some mechanisms provided by the hardware like ACPI from the Linux, from, from x86 architectures. And of course, there are device trees. That's the, the main way to do it, right? You register devices and device tree, and then at startup time, the kernel will read the device tree and provide information to buses that will instantiate the drivers to talk to devices registers in the device tree. And of course, there are buses that auto-nominate devices, so you don't need to, to, to register a device in the USB bus because the USB bus is able to automatically identify the devices. So let's go to our uh, latest uh, hands-on here. Our last hands-on, uh, hands-on number five. So let me open the, the driver here. And the structure of the driver now changed a little bit, right? We, we, uh, we still have the initialization and the exit functions, but they are abstracted in this macro uh, model platform driver. And uh, what we are really doing here is we are converting our driver to a platform driver to be registered in the platform bus. So this is structure of the platform driver. And we can see here the probe function that will be called when a device uh, that matches this driver is registered in, in the bus. And uh, we can see here uh, the link to the match table of this driver that I have only one uh, string, this uh, uh, compatible string, LabWorks uh, DRV LED. So if I register this in the device tree, my, the probe function of my driver will be called. And uh, what has changed in the probe function of the driver? Basically, uh, here we remove it everything, uh, all of the information from the hardware, we remove it from the driver, and this is going to be provided in the device tree, and it's going to be provided by the, the platform bus. So here we're going to be here, what I'm going what I'm doing here is basically uh, getting the pointer from the device tree node and collecting the GPIO from there. So again, I am decoupling the information from the device that's coming from the device tree from the driver itself. Let's compile and see how it works. Um, okay, let's... Uh, one thing that I forgot to show is the device tree node, right? So I have here in my device tree a node, as you can see here, with the compatible that matches my driver. And here we have a node with a LED that I want to register. So the driver is reading this information, right? That was before in the code itself, now it's outside in the driver. This is already there in my device tree, so I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna uh, 
unload the latest driver and load this new one. Very nice. What has changed? The LED is still there and we can talk to this LED. So I can, again, still uh, turn on and off the LED. So that hasn't changed, but now we can see um, everything in this structure of buzzes of the lens kernel in this slash C slash buzz. We can see information for, from all of the buzzes. And here we have information from the platform buzz. And then here we can have a clear view of the separation between devices and drivers, right? So the devices in the bus are here. We can see information about uh, our device, the LED device here, that we register in the device tree, right? This comes from the device tree node. And here we can see a link to the driver. So a device is linking to a driver that is managing this device. And we also have here uh, information about the driver, right? So this is the, the, the driver that is handling this device, the LEDs uh, device. That is not, not that, that is very nice, right? The, the link in between uh, devices and, and drivers at slash sys. Um, to finish my presentation, I want to, I want to quickly uh, show how flexible this model is. So this is what we have done so far, right? We, we went from a, a very simple LED driver that was using a SHAR uh, uh, device interface and also accessing directly the, 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 the registers. And, and we saw that was wrong because it was not reusable. Everything was hard coded in the driver. It's not maintainable. And we changed it to use uh, different kernel APIs uh, and abstractions. Most of them comes from the driver more model of the Linux kernel, right? So that's what we have today. So when you write to the to, to, to LED, right, the call will get to the to the framework that uh, will call a callback from our driver that will ask GPL lib to turn on the LED that will ask the driver con GPL controller that will talk to the hardware. Let's say now we want to change the hardware. Let's say that uh, now our LED is connected to a GPIO expander in the I2C bus. If we take that first version of our driver, we just have to throw away the code and write a new one, right? Because now the LED is connected to, to a very different uh, hardware device, like a GPIO expander. With this new approach, you don't need to change anything, right? Everything will still work. Uh, but of course, there are some changes that you need to do here. First, that is this I2C bus. So we have to add uh, the, you need uh, I2C controller driver for the bus. And of course you need the, uh, the I2C uh, bus there, the code for the I2C bus so you can talk to this bus. And now you need the uh, driver for this GPIO expander, right? And this GPIO expander will um, basically talk to the, to the I2C bus, right? That's why we have uh, this line here and we'll export uh, GPIOs to the system. So it's a GPIO producer. Um, and what you need to do now for a driver to keep working, you go to the device tree and change it, right? So you, you declare a node for your uh, GPIO expander and then you connect the LED to this new GPIO controller. Instead of pointing to the GPIO controller of the SOC, you point it to the, to the node of the GPIO controller for the, the GPIO expander and that's it. So you just enable uh, a, a few extra kernel modules to work with the, the GPIO expander and so on. And you change the device tree and you don't have to change one line of our code. Let's say you want to do another change here and it's very different thing now. So we want to do bit banging on GPIO. So uh, let's say you don't have I, I square C buzz anymore. So we want to take two GPIOs and uh, convert it to a, a nice square C bus with a technique that we usually call bit banging, right? You emulate the bus using the, the GPIO. Very nice. Do I need to change my ledge driver code to make that work? 
Of course not. It will work again. What do we need right now for that to work? So um, we basically need a driver that will we, that will do this emulation, right? That will convert two GPIOs to one uh, I square C bus. And here we go. So this is the driver, right? The driver will um, use two GPIOs, so it will consume two GPIOs and export a bus. And this is a very important concept here. If we see all of these blocks here, all of them are abstractions, converting something to something else, right? So uh, the, this I square C GPIO adapter, it's converting two GPIOs to one I square C bus. The GPIO expander driver, uh, it's uh, converting the GPIO expander, that's basically a protocol over I square C, uh, to GPIOs, right? Our LED driver is converting one GPIO to one LED. So everything here, they are all abstractions to something, usually converting something more complicated to something more simple. What you need to do now to make that works? You go to the device tree and change one line. So instead of saying that your GPIO expander is connected to I square C zero, for example, you're gonna see we're gonna say that it is connected to the other GPIO controller that's the adapter for the bit banging uh, I square C bus. That's it, just one line in the device tree. So uh, the colors here, they, they have a meaning. So what's in uh, orange, they are kind of uh, common kernel code that you don't need to touch. What, what we have in blue here are the drivers that we usually write for the Linux kernel, right? And uh, the other important thing here, it's kind of, you, we are playing with Lego. It's very nice, right? So you have these small blocks, right? that you can connect uh, with each other. And how do you connect them? Uh, using a device tree. So you usually, everything here, you already have in the Linux kernel. Everything that you talk about here, like this GPIO uh, expander to bit bank to GPIOs to make it uh, a nice crazy bus, we already have this in the Linux kernel. So you just have to go there and enable it in the device tree, right? So in the end, all of the drivers, they are very, with this architecture that we saw here in this presentation, all of the drivers, they are really very modular and reusable and pluggable. So you enable it and you connect the dots using the device tree. Very nice. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Uh, it took a little bit more time than I, I thought, but I, I, I think it was useful and I hope it was useful for all of you. Those are my contacts. Uh, feel free to write me, um, leave me a message, uh, connect me on, on LinkedIn, Twitter, or following, uh, follow my, my blog. Again, I hope you enjoy and uh, have a, a nice conference. Bye-bye.